Hi, this is Walter Weesey with Parks Fly Shop's Fly Tying video for April 8th, 2010. Uh, fly I'm doing today is called a GFA, which stands for General Foam Attractor. Um, this is a fly we tie in a whole bunch of different colors. It's basically a hopper, maybe a large caddis or small stone fly. Um, we do this fly in olive. We do it in light brown, gold. Uh, I've done it in black. Uh, even done some experimental versions in colors like purple. Um, and pink. This one is probably the best selling version of the fly and it, it uses actually a kind of mixture of tan and light brown foam, kind of a wood grain, uh, sort of a pine wood grain actually, as you can hopefully see here. I've only seen this foam one place that was the uh, Ben Franklin store in Helena, Montana. If anybody sees it anywhere else I'd really like to know where. Uh, I've found it in other mixed colors primarily uh, dark brown and tan, but this, this version is great for grasshoppers. I've tied all kinds of different grasshopper variations with it, and I'm running out of the stuff, so uh, if you ever find it, let me know. Key, ver key features of this fly, besides that uh, multicolored foam, are the hook, which is a, a Dairiki 280, which is a 2x long curve shank hopper hook, kind of a slightly shorter shank than, uh, than you'll see on a stimulator hook, and uh, a round bend, so you have much, much better hookups. You have a, a much wider gape. And that wide gape also helps the fly float correctly. As you can see here, I've secured the foam directly above the hook point, so there's a lot of metal that hangs down below the fly. And that kind of acts as a, a lever to pop the fly into floating correctly when it's in the water. Um, when you get a lot of foam on top of a fly, especially on flies like a club sandwich, a lot of times what happens is the fly flops over on its side. Uh, this fly usually floats correctly. Um, the wing is just natural deer hair. I'll use natural or dyed depending on the color. Uh, the thread is, you probably can't tell, but it's a cream which, which contrasts just a little bit with that tan foam. Uh, I like to use a thread color that contrasts just a little bit with the uh, foam. For example, on the olive I'll use chartreuse, on the gold I'll use yellow. So a little bit of contrast there. Then the legs are uh, a product called barred speckled silly legs and I like to use those silicone legs instead of standard rubber legs uh, because they are multicolored and create quite a bit of contrast um, between the legs and the foam. And then a little bit of foam here, bright foam, on top of the fly as an indicator. Okay, first step in tying the GFA. I'm going to start your thread right up at the front and lay first a smooth thread base down to directly over that hook point. And then the next thing I'm going to do is spiral my thread back and forth several times. And what that does, number one, it creates a bit of a um, bit more bulk for that thread base to, so it shows up a little better. But more importantly, what it does is create sort of an uneven surface for the foam and the super glue that I'm going to use to secure the foam allows that to adhere to. So I've got my foam strip here, and um, what I'm going to do is clip off just a little bit so that I have nice long expanse of uh, mixed colors there because I want, I want to have a good representation of both uh, both colors. I'm going to notch the ends of that. I'm going to tie that in so it extends about two-thirds, maybe two-thirds to three-quarters of the length of the underbody back beyond the rear of the fly. Start that with about four turns of thread up at the front. I'm going to make one large segment, wrapping directly over the top of the foam, and then two slightly smaller segments back to the end of the body. The underbody, I should say. I'm going to make a couple more thread wraps at the back, and then bring my thread back up to the front. As you can see, I, I, this is one example where I do use the rotary feature a little bit. The reason I do that is to make sure I uh, get my, my segments even, or more or less even, and more importantly so I don't get any thread on the bottom of the fly. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is put some super glue right on that thread base. That's going to make this fly much more durable and ensure that it doesn't twist. <laughs> 
So just I don't really slop it on there, I really try to get it just mostly on the thread. Now the wing is going to be natural deer hair and a fairly thick bunch of it. I like to have a pretty heavy wing on this fly both to provide additional flotation and to so it really shows up well. Uh, having a pretty bulky wing um, you know, creates more more illusion of mo movement, just makes the fly itself look bigger. This is a size 10, which is the most common size I tie this fly in. And secure that with one, two wraps only. Uh, from this point onward, you really need to be careful about how many thread wraps you make. Uh, if, you, if you make four or five turns with everything, you'll have a very, very bulky fly at the end. And what I'm doing here, trying to not bang the camera, is uh, clipping off the butt ends of that hair very, very short. Uh, it's usually a little easier process because I, I come at it a little differently, but the camera's in the way right now. Um, but I clip that very, very short, short enough that if I didn't apply any adhesive right now, it, that wing would pull right out the first time I made a cast with it. But what we're going to do here is apply a little bit more super glue right on top of that first segment. Not really into the wing very much. Um, I mostly try to keep it on the foam to keep it from getting up into my actual wing. But then I fold that remaining portion of that strip back, secure it with one or two tight turns, and that creates a bullet head. On top of that, I'm going to take a foam strip. This is a foam strip I've actually a two millimeter foam strip I've actually cut more or less in half. You usually don't need to use an entire strip uh, to provide good a good strike indicator on your foam flies. Um, most of the time all that does is makes the fly top heavy and makes it tip over. So I secure that thin foam strip right on top and I take my legs um, which are brown and, and you probably can't see that they, they do sparkle quite a bit. So they're brown, kind of a translucent brown with a little bit of gold sparkle and then black barring. So there's a lot of different colors there which suggest movement. And notice I did not even make a thread wrap to secure that leg. I just kind of slid it up beneath the thread that I already had. And then I made one turn to secure that other leg, like so. I generally want to secure those kind of at the midpoint um, between the, the top and bottom layers of that wood grain foam. I get my whip finisher. Make a four turn whip finish. Notice since, since I was being careful with my wraps there, I don't have a, a super bulky uh, tie off point there. And then the final step is to get my head cement. And I'm going to apply that pretty liberally both to the bottom and to the two sides of that th thread there. And what that does is it reinforces the legs slightly and then of course seals the thread. There's a completed GFA hopper. Uh, like most of the flies I've been doing, this one is going to appear in my upcoming book. And the recipe for it will appear on our website for probably about a week after I post it. Um, as always, thank you for watching and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me.